Hey Happy Friday, I'm a little bit ill so there's no video, but the tech news does not stop. Windows 12 got leaked, HyperOS got announced and there's a revolutionary new machine that has a whole new way of making chips. We have a lot to talk about. This video was sponsored by Brilliant. Okay, my first story of the week is that the Windows 12 rumor mill is heating up, with the OS having leaked so much, it is now basically officially confirmed. Initially, multiple reports and even a Microsoft executive directly said on X that Windows 12 was not a thing before he deleted his tweets, but then Microsoft's Yusuf Mahadi started hinting at future versions of Windows to The Verge at Build 2023. The company hid this screenshot in Dupanos Panay's calendar about the next generation Windows at the event, and most recently, Intel actually confirmed confirmed the timing too. An Intel executive, while they announced their financial reporting, said that, quote, we actually think that 2024 is going to be a pretty good year for client, in particular because of the Windows refresh. Client is what Intel likes to call PCs, and a Windows refresh is exactly the terminology that they used ahead of Windows 11's launch as well, so we now know to expect Windows 12 in 2024. So, what can we expect from this update? Well, given that Windows 11 was all about cleaning up the design, it's unlikely that 12 will be a major visual refresh again. The only major UI change that we've heard of so far was a concept that Microsoft itself has leaked that puts the taskbar up on top, kind of like Mac OS. Previous rumors about Windows 12 becoming a subscription-based OS are also almost certainly false, with Windows Central shutting these down, and instead every indication is that they'll focus on two specific areas. First is ARM PCs to compete with Apple. From the upcoming Snapdragon X event to job postings and an increase in Microsoft's own Silicon team, we know that the company is working on finally making Windows on ARM not suck so much on 12. And second, there will be more powerful AI features across the operating system and its apps that should go way beyond just the current simple Windows Copilot. These AI features will most likely require neural processing units or NPUs to run well, which both Intel, AMD and Qualcomm are expected to ship in their next generation chips. Hopefully that doesn't mean that we'll need NPUs to upgrade. Okay, for my second story of the week, Canon announced that they figured out a bombshell of a new technology called nano imprint lithography that if they are right, could completely change how chips are made. It's the biggest chip news that I've heard in years, and I'm gonna try to speedrun this explanation. So chip making basically consists of putting tiny little patterns onto a silicon wafer that will form the transistors and other components of the chip. Traditionally, we did this by shining a special type of light through a mask to effectively burn the pattern in that we want, and the smaller the patterns we wanted to make, the shorter the wavelength of this light had to be. That is great, but since we reached a nanometer scale, the light has to be so specialized that it needs an insane amount of energy, and the machines for it can only be made by a single Dutch company called ASML. So ASML had virtually no competition at the bleeding edge for many, many years here, but Canon says that they figured out a whole new way of making chips. This technique is called nano imprint lithography, and it takes the same silicon wafer, but inkjet prints a liquid called a resin onto it, and then has the mask with the desired pattern basically pressed on so the resin fills up the empty space and create the desired pattern for the circuits. Then a light is used to harden the resin so that the mask can simply be removed and voila, your chip is basically done. This has been a well-known idea before, but people didn't really think it was feasible at scale because so many things can break, but Canon says that they managed to figure out how and even listed all the problems that they solved. Canon says that they can already create chips with this at around the 5 nanometer equivalent process, which is almost as good as ASML's best, and they say that they can scale this even even higher in the future too. And if that's true, then this could be an incredibly big deal, because this technique does not need a crazy light source, since the pattern simply gets pressed on, and so the whole machine uses way less energy and resources, which in turn should make both the machine and the actual chip making radically cheaper. Given that even a single ASML machine costs something like $300 million by now, and given that it consumes a ton of power, that alone would be a huge deal. Now, Canon is a Japanese company, and Japan has generally joined export sanctions against China, so it's unclear whether these machines would be exported to them or not, but they should have major geopolitical ramifications either way. Of course, this all assumes that the company is right about its product, but fun fact, Canon was actually a leader in lithography until ASML caught them, so I guess it's not a completely unlikely event. 
Okay, and for my third story of the week, Xiaomi announced Hyper OS, which fun fact is neither very hyper and nor is it an OS really either. Instead, it is basically just a new name for the next version of their Android skin called MIUI. Hyper OS will first appear on the Xiaomi 14 series across the globe very soon, and Xiaomi confirmed that it still uses Android underneath. Leaks have since come out to even say that the UI mostly just seems like a small refresh versus MIUI as well, which is kind of hilarious, but I have a pretty convincing theory for what might be going on. And to start with, does this logo remind you of anything? For me, it's very clearly inspired by Harmony OS. The font is very similar and so are the colors, including the identical blue accents. And then there's of course the OS in the name for both. Huawei has spent literally a fortune explaining to Chinese consumers that Harmony OS is totally not just Android, but also part of their proprietary magical smart device ecosystem. So Xiaomi, who is of course is all about their device ecosystem, probably felt the need to let consumers know that they can do what Huawei can do too. So that's my theory. Let me know if you agree. Okay, now onto the brief, which this week starts with the fact that Apple can now update iPhones in stores without opening their boxes. They built a new wireless pad for this that turns the devices on inside their boxes, runs the software update, and then turns them off again. Wild. And while we are at Apple, they also introduced a brand new Apple Pencil. This one costs $79 and it can be recharged via USB-C, but there is no wireless charging or pressure sensitivity, and you now need a sheet like this to decide which Apple Pencil you will want. Maybe we lost the plot a little bit here. Then, moving on in the land of weird product launches, Intel released its 14th gen desktop chips, which are a tiny refresh over the last generation with no major design improvements. The theory is that Intel focused all of its efforts on their mobile processors this year, which were a huge upgrade, but that means that desktop fans got basically nothing this year. Next up, the OnePlus Open and its sister phone, the Oppo Find N3, basically just got launched, showing off a very competitive looking foldable with little to no crease, good cameras and for the OnePlus also a launch in the US. This looks genuinely great. And also this week, YouTube announced a new feature that should light up the like and subscribe button when they get mentioned. So let me know if it works for you when I say like and subscribe. Then next, Ferrari announced that they will accept crypto as payment, presumably so that the crypto bros no longer have to settle for a Lamborghini. And Qualcomm announced that it was working with Google to develop a RISC-V chip to power next generation Wear OS wearables, and that it is doing this together with Google. Let's see if that ends up being any good. And then in AI news, PwC, one of the big four accounting and consulting firms, has partnered with OpenAI to have AI consult on complex matters in tax, legal, and human resources, such as carrying out due diligence on companies and more. I don't know if I pay a consulting firm millions just for them to ask ChatGPT how to run my company, but I guess it is clear that the AI is the future and we better adapt, which you can now do better than ever over on Brilliant. Brilliant has just launched launched a whole new course called How LLMs or Large Language Models Work, and this is the perfect path to learn about the technology that is changing our world. There are eight lessons that start from simple introductions to images and text generation, all the way to more complex concepts like tokenization, and as is usual with Brilliant, their secret sauce is that the course is designed to be as interactive as possible. Each step is explained and then practiced right away, so you get a real deep understanding of it, and so that you start straight away with thinking and not just reading. Brilliant has similar great courses on a ton of other STEM topics from maths to computer science, physics, biology, and more. And whether you want to learn how to build cool stuff or just brush up on long forgotten skills, this is a really great place to go. Their interactive design is not just way more fun than simply reading a book or watching a video, it also switches your brain from a passive mode into an actively participating one, so you retain knowledge a lot better. You can get a 30-day free trial at brilliant.org tfc, and the first 200 people who sign up using that link will also get 20% off if they choose an annual premium subscription. So check them out, happy learning, and I'll see you next week.